Hello and welcome to Bites Bread and Barbecue. Today we're going to be cooking some steaks on a pellet grill. And what you need to know is with pellet grills, they're actually very interesting devices. At low heat, low and slow, they're a smoker. At medium heat, they're more like a brick-fired oven. And at high heat, they function as a grill. So where are we gonna, we're going to be grilling steaks today, so we're looking at high heat. Um, so if you like what you see today, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, we'd welcome you. It'll help our YouTube statistics. So let's get to it. We're going to start with steaks on the pellet grill today. And we're going to be preparing some Delmonico steaks. The very first thing that you need is that you need some cooking oil of some type or other, and also a dry rub. Now, I live in the snack food capital of the world in Hanover, Pennsylvania, famous for Utz potato chips and Snyder pretzels uh, and a variety of other snack foods, but Utz makes some really good dry rubs, and I'll leave a link to their rubs uh, in the description below. But they do make some really good rubs. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is take your vegetable oil and you're going to rub it on to the steaks. And I had watched several YouTube videos when I started cooking on the Traeger and they said just use any type of cheap vegetable oil when you're applying the rub. You don't have to waste your money on expensive olive oil. And after you have thoroughly oiled the steaks and you're going to start applying the dry rub. And you're going to take that rub and apply it to all sides of your steak. You're going to apply it very liberally and you're going to rub it in. Now this rub is called the works and it is a sweet rub which sweetness really tastes good on a, a steak. Um, I also like their prime. Uh, both of these rubs can be applied to any type of meat but you can use any rub that you want. Um, this particular one happens to be a little bit on the sweet side with a combination of spices and salts. Um, and uh, you just make sure that it is very, very liberally applied. So you're going to pat it on, and once you have both sides done, you want to make sure that uh, you're going to get it well rubbed, and you're going to apply it to the sides of the steak as well. You want this rub everywhere at the steak. Go down the sides, make sure every every aspect of this steak is covered in your dry rub that you're going to apply. And the reason you're doing this is you're going to set these steaks aside for a while uh, and you're going to allow them to marinate. The reason you do that is it causes this spice and the salts on here to set up on the meat. It's almost going to create like a glaze. So um, you take your steaks after they've been rubbed and you set them aside. It's best if you can do this the day before, but if you have a few hours, try to give the steaks a few hours with the rub in place. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get our grill ready for the steaks to be cooked. You wanna oil your grates to make sure that the steaks are not gonna stick to it. Now, please do this before you turn the grill on. You do not wanna be spraying something like the Pam you just saw me use into an, any place that has an open flame, you're gonna have a fire. So you do this before you do any type of cooking on the grill. And the next thing you're gonna do is that you're gonna to start to preheat the grill. So for a steak, you're gonna target a temperature between 450 and 500 degrees. And the day that I was doing this was rather cold. You can see that my grill started at 37 degrees. In fact, on the little display, it said initiating cold weather startup. So I wanna take that grill from 37 degrees all the way to 500 degrees. And you don't want the steaks on there before it's between 450 and 500. And despite the fact that it says pork tenderloin, on uh, the little inset here. I was just using the app on my phone to control the temperature of the grill. I am cooking steaks. So once you have initiated your, your grill and have the temperature set to the 500 degrees, you're gonna notice that your grill fires up and it's gonna go through all three stages. And when it starts, it actually initiates the low temperatures, it acts like a smoker. And you want that to almost burn off as you go through the heating sequences until you get all the way up to the 500 degrees. And you can see it was pretty cold here today. There's snow on the ground. So once you have your gas grill to temperature, you're gonna place the steaks on the grill. And you'll notice that after marinating, they do kind of have a orange glaze-like appearance. And you're gonna stick them on the grill and you're gonna grill them 
for six minutes per side. Um, the, the key to this is that you're gonna have to keep them at an equal temperature on both, or an equal length of time on both sides of uh, the cooking sequence um, so that the, cook, the, the steak does cook appropriately. So after six minutes, you're gonna flip your steaks over and you can see that we have some nice grill marks on the top of the steaks now. Uh, and you're gonna close the lid and you're gonna let them go for another six minutes. Once your total of 12 minutes is up, you're gonna remove your steaks from the grill. And look at how marvelous these look. They have a nice cook, they've got grill marks, they're juicy, they're not burned, and that's the key with a pellet grill, is that you do a nice slow cook and you don't get any flaming or burning. You're gonna set these steaks aside for five minutes and let them rest. After the five minutes, they're ready to eat and enjoy. Well, I hope you enjoyed your stay here at Bites Bread and Barbecue. If you enjoyed your stay, please come back again. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and we were happy to have you along for this discussion of steaks on a pellet grill. Talk to you later. Bye.